So the fixed surface medium device, inside my return air wet bulb was 70, outdoor dry bulb was 83, so it gives me a target superheat of 23. That's where I want to be at. But my superheat's actually at 38. I have too much superheated vapor. That means there's not enough liquid in there. That means I have a starved evaporator. High superheat, starved evaporator. Now look at my subcooling with my same 83 degree outdoor temperature. My secondary chart, we'll add a link for some of these. That shows that my outdoor temperature should be pretty close to about 10 degrees of subcooling. And I only have five degrees of subcooling. So my subcooled liquid is too low. I should be at 10, I'm at five, so I have low subcooling. That means I have a starved condensing in it. So I don't have enough refrigerant inside, I don't have enough refrigerant outside. So what we need to do, we need to add refrigerant. That is, we're gonna add our yellow hose, a scale, and a tank of refrigerant. So for this, we need a refrigerant scale. We'll pull our scale out. We'll set it as level of the ground as we possibly can. Turn my scale on, and it's showing weight, so I'm going to zero this out. What I'm going to do is put this over here out of the way. The next is measure my uh, tank refrigerant. It's going to be total weight on this tank is 31 pounds and 5 ounces. So I'm just going to make a starting point reference here. So I'm going to put somewhere on this tank, I'm going to write 31 pounds, 5 ounces. That was my starting point. So I'm going to get my third hose ready. I'm going to put it over here where it says the REF refrigerant. And since I have the valve, this is going to be a lot easier to do this. So I'm going to take this plug off of here, the cap off, make sure it has the rubber O-ring, and I'm going to put it on my manifold gauge set. From there, I'm going to take and put this on top of my gauge, and I'm going to leave this a little bit loose. It's a little bit loose. Because what's in this hose right now is dirty, nasty, ugly, polluted air. And what's in my manifold is also dirty, nasty, polluted air. So what I'm going to do is open my refrigeration valve, that connects this hose to my very center. Then I'm going to open this, I'm going to crack this, and I'm going to purge this line. The refrigerant from the unit, the low pressure side, is going to run across the manifold gauge set through the hose. It's going to leak out here. As it does, it's going to push the air out. So that's open. We're going to open this. Hear it leaking out, the minimus. And all I do is just tighten that connection up. Now that connection's tight, I'm going to go ahead and leave my suction side open but I'm gonna close off my refrigerant side. And what I'm gonna do is open this valve up. So now my tank is connected to my center hose. Now this is a very important step because it's a 400 series refrigerant, it is a blend. Now 410A is a near azeotrope, so it's less likely to fractionate, but we still wanna charge it as a liquid. So now that this valve is open, we're gonna tank, turn this tank upside down. So now we're getting only liquid out. By getting only liquid out, we know that it's not gonna fractionate. Now, 410A is highly unlikely to fractionate anyways, but it's so much easier and faster to charge with uh, liquid regardless. So now I'm showing a weight on my scale. I'm gonna have to be careful while I hold this because if I move my gauges, it's gonna move the that's showing in the tank. I'm gonna zero my scale out. So there's zero weight on there. So now I can measure how much refrigerant I'm putting in. So now that it's zeroed out, I see that my superheat is very high. I know that my target superheat is going to be 23. So superheat's more important than the fixed orifice. So I'm going to add refrigerant until I get my superheat matching my target. Now because I'm putting liquid in, it's going to go into my suction side, my low pressure side, the vapor gas side. I'm putting liquid in, I'll make sure that that vapor flashes, flashes into a gas before it gets to the compressor. So we're going to put little shots of refrigerant in, just little bitty bursts of refrigerant to allow that liquid refrigerant to boil to a vapor before it gets to my compressor. So now it's coming out of the tank as a liquid and it's going into the line as a saturation and before it gets to the compressor, ideally it boils or changes state. So it's going to give it a little shot. As I give it a shot, you're going to see these numbers jump up. We're going to open this one, give it a little shot. It's a little shot of refrigerant, so I put a little boost in. And if you feel the suction line, the temperature of the suction line drops because it's flashing, changing state from a liquid vapor, boiling, absorbing heat, that's latent heat. You can feel the temperature drop. So I gave it a little shot. I'm going to just go ahead and give it another little shot. And I don't know if the camera will see it, but right through here, we can actually see the refrigerant boil from a liquid to a vapor. 
Let's give it a little shot of refrigerant, see if we can see it in the sight glass. So I'm unable to get it to where you can see the refrigerant to flow. But here you can see that our superheat is still very high. So we're going to give it another shot of refrigerant. Just going to open up this valve, give a little shot of refrigerant. You can see how the pressure changes. The, high, the low side goes, jumps up, and then it starts to come back down. Just going to give it a little shot of refrigerant here. You can see how the numbers are changing. As you can see our subcooling is starting to climb and our superheat's just barely starting to drop. So we can look and see how much we've put in. We've already put in one pound, five ounces of refrigerant. You can see that our suction saturated temperature, and here is our actual suction line temperature, 78. Suction saturated is 45.9, but this superheat, that's the number we're really looking at. So my subcooling is now getting within range, so we're going to slow down and let it let the refrigerant cycle through and see if it balances out. So our superheat's dropped to 25 and our subcooling is still 9. So we're focused more in superheat with a fixed orifice, so we'll just give it a little bit more refrigerant. Give it just a little bitty shots to allow that liquid to turn into a vapor. So we let the system run and uh, at that last charge we have a 20 degree superheat. Our target was 23, so we've slightly overcharged our evaporator coil. We wanted a subcooling of about 10 degrees of subcooling. We have 10 degrees of subcooling, so our subcooling matches. Our superheat's pretty close. I'm going to call it close enough, slightly overcharged, very slightly. So we are good. I'm going to call this system good. Next, we got to do is take our gauges off of the system. We put in one pound, 14, one pound 15 ounces of refrigerant in this system. So next we're going to take our gauges off. All right, so I'm ready to take the gauges off. What I'm going to do is turn my tank right side up, and I'm going to shut my valve off. So with this valve shut completely off, I have liquid refrigerant still in this hose. I also have liquid refrigerant in this hose as well. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bleed off that last little bit of refrigerant that was in this hose. Make sure my suction side is still open. It's going to bleed that across. Now the refrigerant's out of this hose. Remember, it's already purged. Now I'm going to take my high side off. I'm going to shut my valve off manually. Two fingers, quickly. There's also liquid refrigerant in this hose. So what I'm going to do is hold this hose up. As well as my yellow hose will be up and I'm gonna open the high side. By opening the high side, it's gonna bleed the high pressure back to the suction side. I'm doing it this way because I've already purged the system. So there's no need to switch the hoses like we did before. I already have purged the center set. So I'm gonna open my suction side, it's already open. This one's open, I'm gonna open my high side and you can see my high side pressure is dropping. And it will only drop to, it's only gonna to drop to what my suction side is. So let's drop, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this hose up, physically raise this hose up so any liquid refrigerant will drain down. Shut my high side off. I'm going to close this valve, take it off my tank. I'm going to hold it up so it drains down. And then just to make sure, I'm also going to hold up my suction hose, make sure any of that liquid goes back into the system. Now once that's done, I'll take, shut off my valve for the suction take it loose and I'm going to go ahead and de minimis. Now I got the same pressure both. I'm going to de minimis release that last little bit of so my suction is empty. I'm going to de minimis bleed out that last little bit of vapor. It's empty and I'm going to de minimis bleed out the last little bit of vapor and it's empty. So all three hoses are empty. I take my cap 
I put my cap back on my tank to make sure that stays clean and pure and clear. I take my cap from a high side. It does not have an O-ring with this style. We're going to take and put it on the units. Same thing with my suction side. I'll take and put it on the unit. Put my hoses back where they go. I never want to let them hit the ground. I want to make sure that I don't get any dirt or contaminants in there. So I'm going to screw it back on my gauge manifold set. High side on the high side and low side on the low side. Take my clamps, put them back here where they're protected. And that's it, charging a Sysma Super Heat and Subcooling, that easy. Last thing I wanna do here, I'm gonna make a little note, do I add this to my refrigerant log book? I just make my log on my tank. I have a refrigerant log book, I wanna put these in later, but for right now I'm gonna put one pound, one LB pound, 10 ounces. And I'm going to put the notation of where that was used at. I'm going to re-zero my tank. Tank and the contents is 29 pounds, 8 ounces. I'm going to write the new contents on here. And I'm going to add the date on that. So that way if I forget to put it in my logbook, I have it right here on the tank itself. There's much more that goes to checking the charge. This is our introductory basics. So we had a system with low refrigerant, starved evaporator, starved condenser. We added refrigerant until that charge was balanced. And that's assuming airflow is good. This system does have good airflow. It was confirmed. 